So holding, there's quite a lot of questions about it in air law. I always myself think it's kind of misplaced. I would have thought it would be more relevant to ops or something like that. But there we are. It's quite a big topic. Uh, this is a hold. It's a right hand hold. The vast majority of holds are right hand. The only reason they would go the other way, left hand, is because there's a mountain or something on the right hand side. But most of them are right hand. And you can see it's arranged in a racetrack pattern. So it's also colloquially known as a racetrack. We've got the fix itself. Oh, I'll just get my laser pointer working. Got the fix itself. And then we do a turn to the right, an outbound leg, another turn to the right, and the inbound leg back to the hold. And each one of those takes a minute. And so altogether, that hold should take four minutes. So those turns are rate one turns, which is three degrees a second. And we fly at a bank angle of 25 degrees or rate one, whichever is less. And there's a nice little rule of thumb where we can work out what our bank angle should be. And that's very simply our speed times 10% plus seven. So if we're flying at 100 knots, 10% of that is 10 plus seven, 17 degrees angle of bank. Okay, which is less than 25. So that's what we'll fly. Yeah, it's not that easy to fly accurately 17 degrees, I'll grant you. But if you do, you your best shot at it, you'll fly a nice rate one turn around. Um, it's one minute on the outbound leg, but it does change if we fly a hold above 14,000 feet or flight level 140, then how long does it get in time? One and a half. That's it, yeah, so one and a half. There is a question about that, if we are above flight level 140. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what it looks like. It is protected, as in around it, we keep it clear from obstacles so that we can fly safely in the hold. And also if we stray a little bit away from the track, then we're still gonna be okay. Although it is really important to stay on track. So we might have different heights for holds. Um, so we've got a holding pattern up here and a holding pattern down here. Now the lowest holding pattern must be at least 300 meters 984 feet above the highest obstacle in the hold area. Now, either side, we've got a buffer area and we are allowed some uh, penetration of that, like from this mountain, for example, as long as it's still below the lowest holding area. But the buffer area, I've seen questions on this before, is five nautical miles wide. So basically we do the best we can to make sure that if we fly the hold accurately and stay on the hold, there's absolutely no problems with terrain avoidance. So uh, this is what it looks like. And this is the little sketch that you can draw in order to work out the answer to that previous question. So this has been arranged like the question. We've got a right hand hold and the inbound heading is 270 degrees magnetic westerly. Now, in order to work out where these individual sectors are, we then have to draw another line. And that line is the line that runs from here down to here. And you just need to remember that it's at a specific angle. And that angle is 70 degrees. Okay, so 70 degrees from the inbound track or heading. And if you draw that line in, now you've divided the airspace around that fix, around that hold into three. And we start at the top left here and then work anti-clockwise, one, two, three. Okay, so there's one, there's two, and then there's three. And sector one is known as parallel, sector two is known as offset, six to three is known as direct entry. And we can remember that by this little word pod. Okay, so if we write pod like that, and then one, two, three next to it, it reminds us that one is parallel, two is offset, three is direct. Offset is also sometimes known as teardrop because it describes the shape of 
a teardrop. So how does that work in practice? Well, this is in the notes and it's kind of hard for me to draw it clearly, but I'm gonna try anyway, but make sure you do know what the procedure is for these sector one, sector two and sector three, because there are questions on it. But if we're here, for example, in sector three, then we're just gonna fly direct to the hold, holding fix rather, and then we're gonna turn and then we're gonna join. So very straightforward. If we're over here, in sector two, we're going to fly to the fix. We're going to offset the outbound heading by 30 degrees, and then we're going to turn right and then intercept the inbound track. And if we're up here in sector one, we're going to fly straight to the fix. We're going to parallel the outbound heading, and then we'll turn left and then intercept the inbound track. Okay, so that's what we have to do. Now we do have the choice if we come in on 090, for example, which was as per the question, because that shaded area there means that if we're within five degrees of that line, we can decide to use a one or a two. It's entirely up to us. Okay, so there is that flexibility. So that's why the answer to that previous question was a sector one or a sector two. Um, and the important thing is that we must adjust our heading and time to maintain track. We just talked about the protected area around it, but accidents have happened where aircraft have strayed off that racetrack and they've flown into a mountain. So really important that we maintain our track by adjusting heading in time. Now, the there's lots of rules of thumb, and uh, this is not supposed to be an instrument flying lesson, but just to give you an idea. Um, timing is pretty straightforward because we can just say to ourselves that one knot is one second. So if we have, um, on the outbound uh, track, for example, a full-on headwind of uh, 20 knots, then we'll just add 20 seconds. If we've got a full-on tailwind of 20 knots, then we'll take away 20 seconds. And if the wind is kind of quartering, then rather than taking away a second, we can take away half a second. And that stuff works pretty well, actually. You'd be surprised how effective that is. So that's how we can um, adjust our time. But we must also obviously adjust our heading to maintain track, just like we would normally do if we're flying a navigational route. So if we're flying from A to B and we've got a wind coming from the left, we're gonna have to turn our heading into the left, aren't we, in order to maintain our track. Same thing with this on the outbound leg, for example. So if I've got a wind coming from here, then I'm going to have to angle the aircraft into wind by a certain drift angle in order to maintain that track. Really important that we do that. And again, there's, there's various um, rules of thumb that you can do with that. So for example, if we say that's 30 degree angle and we got 20 knots, what we do is we multiply those two together. So 30 times 20 is 600. And then we can just divide that by our TAS and to make it easy for me, let's say the TAS is 100. And then that gives us um, 600 divided by 100, a wind correction angle of six. Okay, so we had 600 divided by the TAS of 100 is a correction angle of six degrees. But we must remember to apply three times that here, because we've got to take into account the minute here, the minute here, and the minute here. So you'll actually turn left three times six, 18 degrees, all right? And then when you come inbound, you'll just use um, the, the normal correction, but in the other direction, obviously. So rules of thumb, they do work quite well. If you do that kind of stuff when you're flying manually, obviously if it's on autopilot, it sorts it out for you. But if you're flying manually, then these kind of things help you keep on track. Really, really important. Now, the other thing is, or the other thing you get asked in the examination is if you're flying around the hold and the tower calls you and says, okay, you, you can start your approach now um, and gives you a time to start the approach. How do you make sure that you get over the fix at that time? Well, you don't speed up, you don't slow down, you don't whack on more bank or take off more bank. What you do is you just adjust your pattern. So let's say at 0430, 
you get told to be over the fix at 0600. So you've got, um, what have you got? You've got a minute and a half, haven't you, to get over there. Now you know that the turn will be a minute. So you can do the normal turn. And if you do it now, you're only gonna have 30 seconds of inbound track to go. So that's a minute and 30. It will get you over there nicely at 0600. Okay, so the answer is you adjust the holding pattern within limits in order to leave the holding point at the specified time. Okay, so that's basically...